have your charters from the Sword Lords of Restov, who rule in the southeast corner of Brevoy under the authority of the Dragon Scale Throne in the capital of New Stetvin. Brevoy feels their claim to this land has been eroded by banditry and distance from the capital. The Sword Lords would like this area to come under their influence and the greater influence of Brevoy. They've tasked several groups with exploring parts of the stolen lands to determine viability for settlements and to clear out any and all creatures that would be a hindrance to that plan. Balmir, Baynard, Marcus, and Pylon, you arrive midday outside Oleg's trading post, having traveled separately from Restov to this remote outpost to begin your charge from the Sword Lords. You see that this used to be a small fort, what with the 20-foot watchtowers at each corner with seemingly broken catapults and the 10-foot-high palisade that lines the interior wall. Immediately through the entryway is a central yard surrounded by several small buildings. Tell me what you're each doing. Uh, Marcus right now is just going to just gonna find a shady spot, just kind of out of the way, just to observe people. In a similar fashion, I'd be a little bit higher up in a tree, but Pylon's going to be uh, just kind of sitting and watching. I feel like Baynard would walk up with his donkey and uh, take a look at Taylor's character and introduce himself kind of gruffly. Just, uh, uh, hi, are you here? Because of the charter? I, I'll nod, and I will just kind of present my charter as well. Yeah, so I, I'll take his, and i take mine out, and i say, yeah, this is, yeah, this is the same. And he hands it back to him. Just going to kind of look at him strangely as he hands it back and just kind of tuck it away. <laughs> uh, is anyone else here yet, or is it just you and me? Uh, you're the first that I've seen. Uh, yeah, I'd introduce myself. Uh, ha, hail and well met friend, I'm Baynard Clark. I'm Marcus DeVore. Ah, uh, Marcus of the Eating. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, Darkus, uh, is there anyone else uh, here, no, or is whoa, it just whoa, me whoa, and you? Whoa, 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 whoa. Marcus. Oh. Mardis, okay, thank you, yes. Okay. <laughs> just gonna sigh heavily. <laughs> Um, at this point, I'd probably like try to get some feed for my donkey out of the uh, side bag and start feeding them some stuff. And while we wait for some other people at that part of the exchange, I think you would hear just a couple branches up, uh, some like stifled laughter. Part of me so desperately wants to throw a dagger where I hear that sound. I rolled 13 for a perception check to look for Liam. Liam, how well are you hidden? I'm not hidden very well at all. Although... Looking down and seeing him fuck the name up and then, like, waltz over to his donkey. I might assume they are sharing a brain or something. And the tree is very shady and mm. got uh, that that half-drow skin. I'm going to say he sees you. Okay. Okay, so I, I look up at them and... Uh, who are you, friend? Pylon. I've got one of your charters as well. Oh, good, he's Irish. Oh, fuck, I- <laughs> Sorry, Piffon? I just slap Pylon on the back and say, welcome to the group. Thanks. <laughs> so you're a drow, you said? He's a, he's a half drow, half human. Um, okay. He's a half elf, essentially. But I've got... Oh, okay. He's got very, very dark skin. So he's black Irish. Black oh, Irish. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think like this would be like the first time Baynard would have met uh, even an elf let alone like a, a half drow. Like I think he's taken aback a bit by this. There's like a look of like, uh, like uh bewilderment on his face almost like, what am I looking at right now? I think that would probably be doubles a little bit because he's like, because of the human blood, he's got dark hair instead of the light hair and darker eyes. So he's all just kind of like charcoal head to toe, like a little difficult. You can see the whites of his eyes and his teeth and it's strange. As we discussed earlier, he's Brutalitops from Community. But again, <laughs> less of a color palette. So, Balmir would roll up, 
would see an elf in a tree and go, fucking typical. <laughs> I climb down. I'll blow past all this, go to the trading post shopkeep, and uh, ask, who's in charge here, and can I get a map? Okay, all right, so... <laughs> It'll watch the dwarf roll by. <laughs> First, I'm going to give you a quick little rundown of what you see, because you don't just walk in and see random guy in charge you're gonna walk into this compound I, I may have misunderstood what was going on but i'll run with this okay they're just they're hanging out it just stomped past them. pretty much the dwarf comes trotting through there was an elf in a tree and a guy feeding a horse i didn't see uh i didn't see much oh, point yeah. in no that's that's fair you obviously weren't in charge so you'll see i'll introduce myself to the shopkeep i am balmir i am on this hang on I have this, you're not uh, at the shopkeep yet <laughs> all right, sorry. You can stop by the fucking He's guards, motherfucker. Everybody, calm down. <laughs> Balmir, you walk through the gate and you see a large compound, as this used to be a fort. You see kitchens, you see stables, and you see a large structure that has been turned into a sort of inn and or trading shop. You may choose to go through there and see what's there, or you can talk to the people behind you and you can go as a group. Your call. Well, I would never split the party, so I think as I go to bust to the gate, if someone wants to maybe turn around and go, does anyone know who's in charge here? No, no, no. You you walk straight on by. You're on your own. We wouldn't have any reason to think that you're coming with us. Boys, you never split the party. I spin around and say, do you know who's in charge here? Obviously not you. No, sorry. What was your, your name there, little fellow? <laughs> I'm chuckling in game two. <laughs> oh, you, no. you can call me Ball. <laughs> Oh, hello, Ball. Nice to meet you, friend. Uh, are you here for the charter as well? Did you answer the call? I'm here to bring order to this godforsaken land. Sorry, before we go on, uh, Taylor, are you a human too? Yep. Okay. I just I w- was going to say something racist. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, racism is, is just fine. Uh, all right there, little, little friend. Yeah, we're. Uh, I think we're all here for the same purpose, to be honest. Well, very uh, good. I I've, I just arrived, so I don't know what uh, uh who's in charge. Or, All right, let's just head yeah. on in, shall we? And I will usher the group in. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. So throughout all this commotion, Oleg steps out into the courtyard, very clearly concerned that there's a group of men just arguing outside his shop. Uh, being a small trading post, he doesn't usually get this number of people. However, he's been expecting you. Hello. Comrades. Oh boy. My name Oleg. Oh boy. I'm to understand that you are here to help with the bandits. Uh, hail Oleg. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, I think that's what we're, we're that's, that's what, what we're all here for, guys, says. right? I pull out the paper and, be, and read it back over. Oh, help get rid of bandits, not help the bandits. Ugh. <laughs> I will smack him in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> You'll not do that again. Oh, you're you're all over the place with that voice. <laughs> Listen, comrade. Listen, comrade. This is good news. Yes, you've come at a very opportune time. Very few bandits then. Very few bandits today. Many bandits tomorrow. Oh, they on a schedule? They are. Yes, they come for uh, how you say safety money. Ah, and tomorrow is payment day. So what you would be expecting today? Uh, drinks. And if you should help us possibly free room. Oh, I can't turn down something free. Can't turn down drinks. This is good. So how many, how many bandits usually show up for payment day? We expect three or four, possibly with scary woman, possibly without. Define scary woman. All of them. Scary woman that scares bandits. I mean, scary woman that does makes lights with her hands scary or just... No, just blade. kills people with sharp things. Gotcha. We have to assume uh, Oleg is not as dull in the brain as the accent you're doing is making him seem. Like he's in charge here, right? This is Oleg trading post, yes. Oleg... <laughs> Motherfucker, he's from a different country. Show the goddamn respect to the man. Look, How dare you? Language. How I'm not asking in character. Dare you? I don't give a fuck. Do we know he was expecting us? 
So, no, actually. Um, yeah, you guys are on mission from the king to clear out the lands south of here. You're, you're not required to help Oleg in any way, but... Gotta make connections. Sort of. And, like, Oleg is your... He, this is going to be your place of commerce throughout your adventures. This is the closest point to everywhere where you're going to be working. This is going to be the only place where you can get room and board away from goddamn fairies and bandits. So... <laughs> the Fey Wilds. Now, only four of them. Is there no reason... You can't stave him off? Uh, hang on, I gotta find the voice again. Comrade, 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 <laughs> comrade. Anchor word. <laughs> Anchor word, comrade. <clears throat> <laughs> You're so welcome, you can bless a sleeper cell. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Comrade, comrade, comrade. Oh, kill the president. <laughs> it's time. What a useless sleeper cell word. They they send four bandits. Damn it, young man, fucking Irish. <laughs> they send four bandits. Uh, only my wife Svetlana and I live here. We occasionally have trappers come through uh, to sell furs and findings in the wilds. However, at the moment, it is merely myself, my wife Svetlana, and a weird old man who drinks. Oh, I'd love to meet him. He's a wizard, I know it. However, we did have messengers come through last week to inform us that the sword lords will send guards to help defend this outpost, as we are now an important part of commerce in the country. However, they will not be here until next week, after tomorrow's payday. Oh, so we're not the guards, oh, thank God. <laughs> you are not. Nothing so pedestrian. However... Should you choose to help, you may get free drink. Yeah, again, you said that awesome word, free drink. I could kill them myself. However, Svetlana is wary uh, that I might be murdered. And more importantly, I am wary that bandits make very keen suggestions on how Svetlana will be treated after my death. So I've rolled two dice. Why? I rolled a 20 for a diplomacy check for like my future conversation with him. Sure. And then I also rolled for a sense motive. So okay. sorry, the diplomacy was 18 with my modifier. That's pretty good. My sense motive has a plus three for a grand total of six. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he can tell me whatever I want, whatever he wants, and I'll believe it. I feel like based on your role play, you'd believe anything anyone tells you. <laughs> <laughs> So I basically I'm going to I'm I want to like look him up and down and see like does he seem like he could be a fighter at all like what does he look like I I'm going to like ask him, like what he knows about the the bands as much as possible I just want to make sure like him and his wife are safe and there's anything else I can do for them that's kind of the questions I want to ask him okay. what's his pants size so uh you you I am up to see what he looks like first that's sort of what you're going mm -hmm. for here yeah. Uh, he's a middle-aged man, um, slightly larger build, uh, clearly is working hard to keep this place running by himself. And you believe him that he could probably fuck up some bandits, but he still has this wife that he lives with and does not want harm to come to. So he pays. Mm -hmm. Ugh, wives, am I right? Getting in the way of <laughs> bandit killing. He, he eyes you in particular, Pylon, and he says, you... Boy, you think you can kill a man? Ha, <laughs> he's got you pegged. Oh boy. <laughs> I do love every time you've we've like got caught on the Russian accent, I've heard Taylor go, oh boy. Like <laughs> in the back. Five gold on the shopkeep. <laughs> oh boy. I could tell you about killing, uh, but I I think you've bought some of my furs before here, so I think you know I can get the skin off something. All right, that's pretty good. I like that. Eric, what were your other questions? Um, so, like, if it comes down to a fight, is he going to help us, or is he going to protect his wife? You might be able to convince him to fight. Um, I think it's really going to depend on whether you, A, choose to fight, and B, how you choose to fight. I th okay. think, like, obviously, each of the characters is going to do what they damn well please and ask what they want of the guy, but... 
think as like the players, keeping him neutral means that he's safe. So if we come back here, he's not just dead someday. But that's like, again, out of character. We don't want him to take a side so the bandits think that we're just attacking them. He did mention that there were more guards coming in a week to properly set up the place. So unless we want to sit here and babysit after whatever fight happens, we should leave him It's just a week, though. Actually, no, it might be a day. Yeah, but that means we just do a week of babysitting. (laughs) White Knight fucking Williams. Yep, but it's not going to take a week. No, the guys are coming tomorrow. Wait, we're not doing this real time? Bandits are coming. Fuck you. (laughs) <laughs> the guards are coming in a week, but that was six days ago. They're coming after payday. I mean, as long as we kill all four of them, I'm sure we'll be fine. And the lady. Don't forget the lady. If she even shows up. Possibly lady. Maybe lady. Maybe lady. Damn it, comrade lady. Maybe lady. <laughs> Oleg. Yes. Do you see where the bandits come from? They come through the front door. <laughs> 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 okay, what about beyond your front door? No, I, I, I work in shop. They come to the shop. I pay from shop. How much do they usually take from you every every payday? Too much. It's rude to ask what someone's income, Eric. If I'm going to be risking my life. I'm personally going to need a little more than a free drink. And also free room? We discuss. Yeah, I'm still going to need a little more than that. Our charters put us uh, in, in this place to get rid of these bandits. I feel like they're dropping. Th- these ones are being dropped right into our lap. I'm getting the feeling that you're throwing yourself on some noble causes. Uh, Baynard, was it? We are hired help. We have to be hired. <laughs> For once, I agree with the elf. This follows in the purview of our charter, Piglo. <laughs> I appreciate that you were able to figure out the spelling just by hearing it, considering you couldn't figure out any names, but just pie. Pie is fine. Okay, pine. Let's just. We, we have a charter. It's to get rid of bandits. These bandits are coming here. They're falling in our lap. We might as well brush them to the side. Order reads bandits farther south. This is a start, though. So, can we agree on that? Oleg would like to interject. Bandits come from south. <laughs> All bandits come from south. They come at sunrise from south. From the forest. From, yes, the wilds, yes. So, all right. Seems like at least one of you is set on these bandits biting the dust tomorrow morning. Is right. good kill experience, yes? That was a question to the group, not to Oleg. Is good kill experience, yes. Is there sorry, so we're we're getting very little information as to what the bandits travel distance is, so we couldn't feasibly go and like try and cut them off now, right? You could ask questions. Okay. And leave your protected fort. You know where they're coming and when they're coming. That's like the easiest set of trap you could possibly have. Kimple, the best trap happens about 20 steps before the fortress. I'm also holding a big crossbow. You should take that into account. <laughs> I'm holding a small short bow. <laughs> We're measuring? Holy fuck, put your dicks down, gentlemen. <laughs> well, you should be embarrassed. <laughs> I'm on uh, Team Bandit Killing here. So they're coming, like, tomorrow tomorrow morning? They'll be here tomorrow morning, um, just after sunrise. They tend to leave very quickly thereafter. So it seems like they're about a day's ride away by horse. I just wanted to point out that the the charter is an indenturement. It's it's contract for work. I just did the fucking Russian accent, son of a bitch. It's contract, yes. It's not a free pass. Philo, I'm going to cut you off right here. I hope this rabble is too. I'm here to bring a lot of this land. And uh, Oleg, if my math is correct, that's a free drink and a free night before the bandits come, because I'm not paying to work for you tomorrow. Correct, comrade Ball. So if you give me a drink and a, a bed tonight, we'll do some bandits in the morning. Thank you. Let's get that drink. All right. Ah, now we're talking. Cool. Everybody hit the bar. Hit the bar. As soon as there's liquor on the tongue, we have a compact. That's a strange way of saying that. Yes, there is. And do you mean contract, not compact? Compact is different. Unless we already know pie likes cream, so... <laughs> oh boy 
pi. Just it. It's not. Yeah. It's a longer I sound. Yeah. Pi. Sure. Got it. Okay. P. Okay. I got you. Pi. Got a pig. Oh Christ! Fantasy Christ! <laughs> <laughs> the the bar area is to the. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Kimple in the chat. <laughs> Sorry, Kimple just typed define compact and then typed. Yeah, I typed it so you wouldn't Google. say it, jackass. <laughs> Don't read what I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> this is not funny enough to make it to the podcast. It's so funny. This is for you. Just define compact. Keep this it to isn't yourself. <laughs> <laughs> a compact is like a, like a contract with uh, with someone much higher above you. That sounds like a contract. That sounds exactly like a contract. Yeah, yeah or it's a pact. Pros. Yeah, it's a it's a flowery word for it. So just fucking use the English word. I, it's a fucking fantasy setting. Oleg is already speaking a second language here. Give him a break. What to say? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! You goddamn pylon. Okay. Everyone just shut up. Everyone shut Boy. up. Let's just move on with our lives here. You get to the bar. Okay, so the bar is in the corner. You get to the bar. Um so I what kind of defenses does this place have? You said it has towers? Yeah, so this was a former fort. Um it's got twenty foot tall towers in the corners with broken uh catapults and then certain foot high walls with palisades walking around it. Theoretically, we can close the gates and have like a couple of us on towers and talk down to them the, if they come up to the gates. That won't give us much surprise, though, if you're hoping to do that. We got to keep the gates open so they walk in. Yeah. Oh, we want to trap them in the fort. They haven't been met with any resistance yet. Uh, Oleg makes a oh, point okay. to note that he has paid them on time as soon as they show up every time because they've threatened to rape and murder his wife. Okay, so is there a place that he and his wife can hide then? Somewhere uh, on the compound? Yeah, um, that is definitely possible. Maybe we can barricade them in one of the the towers or something? Yep, Uh, Svetlana is super on board with that because she doesn't want her husband to die. Oleg, less so. That way, if they get past us, then Oleg helps protect her. Mm -hmm. That's my my theory. So you actually, as you walk into the bar, you meet with Svetlana before you guys start your discussions. I bow like an idiot, and I just, I say some sort of fumbling of... Milady, and I'm just an idiot to her. I look, I look bannered up and down, and I fucking curtsy <laughs> like behind his back. I'm just gonna walk straight to the bar. Okay, <laughs> walk. Give me a second to find female Russian. Hello, comrade. Hello, hello. No, I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> hello. No, you got to do that voice. That voice is so good. <laughs> hello, comrade. Uh, so she meets you as you walk in. She already has a stew ready. She gives you warm bread, and she's already opened a bottle of wine if you want to sit down and chat. Yeah, I definitely. I would sit down, and I dig right into her stew and just tell her, like, how... Uh, even if it's awful, I would tell her how amazing it is. Her husband is right there. Yeah, I'm not trying to flirt with her. I'm trying to, like, act, like, hospitable. Oh, literally dig into her stew. Okay. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Shovel in it with yes. bread. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I'm sure, like, I haven't had very good meals on the road for a long time, so... I feel like this would be a welcome stew. A uh, welcome stew would be a great little, like, in. Oh, that is good, yeah. The welcome stew. Anyways, um, she makes notes and she talks to you guys pretty briefly about how her husband's a big dumb idiot, the usual typical male who's tried to run away from the world and live out in the woods and wants to do everything himself and thank God you're here to help. And she offers assistance and advice on the surroundings of the building and more timing, more detail on what Oleg's already given you. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys some easy information here because she wants to help. So what kind of information can she give us about like the fort? Like, about like, the layout, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you guys, again, you saw most of it as you came in. It's, a, it's about 100 feet by about 100 feet. It's a fair-sized fort. Uh, stables are to the left of the entrance. Uh, bar is to the back right. Is the entrance south? Uh, it is east. So you come at it from the east. But it's it's a small place, so you just walk around to wherever the road takes you. Yeah, I'm drawing it out. Stables are in the back. Bar is on the right. Yeah, the right back corner. Uh, stables are on the left. They take up most of the space. There's the trains at the back on the left. 
and the center is a sort of opening. Uh, there's a large cart there where Oleg stores things that are to be taken to town for sale. And then there are sort of barracks on the bottom right corner. Your four rooms, for example. So where is the shop? Back right corner. Same as the bar. All right. Too easy. And the two towers. Uh, there's four towers on each corner. Perfect. And is there any kind of back door? Or is it just the main gate in the front? Just the main gate. Um, and then you, again, you have visibility over the walls from behind them. Um, if you so choose to block the gates. Is, is there an inner wall, like on the, on the inside of the palisade? No, it's just a raised sort of walking area. Then how far is the tree line from the walls of the fort, roughly? Call it 100 feet. Perfect. How do we get up to the palisade and the towers? There are staircases at the center of each wall. Oh, sorry, at the, uh, yeah, at the center of each wall, except for the gate wall. And then the stairs go up to the towers at each corner as well. Okay. From the palisade. So they're more like a platform. Yeah. They're not like a tower tower. They're more just like a... Yeah, it's a raised platform. platform. It's 10 feet okay. taller. Again, with catapults. Okay, so there's no like inside to the towers is what I'm getting at. Nothing worth dealing with at the moment, no. Okay, okay. Do these guys ride their horses straight up to your shop or do they dismount? They ride right into the center of the courtyards uh, and all of the taxes are going to be on that... Um, What's it called? The cart. cart. Thank you. And ready for them to be picked up tomorrow. That's how they've done it so far. If you guys have a different plan, they're welcome to entertain it. I honestly think the best course of action is some of us are up on the palisades, kind of hiding. They come in. Uh, big meathead Eric can push the gate shut, and then we just don't let them leave. Sure. You know, you were talking about if you want to do an ambush at the forest line, I can do range attacks from the top if you keep them out of the fort entirely or we can attack them in the fort once they're close proximity i like the idea of blocking them in because then they can't get away and come back with more bandits they can send the next wave if they need to but four of them show up maybe with danger lighting we lock the door behind them deal with them anyone else have roxanne playing in their head right now danger lady <laughs> <laughs> I can give you some more details on the first couple encounters with the bandits as well. Yeah. Uh, how did it start? Yeah. So the first time they showed up a few months ago, right after Oleg opened his trading post, uh, they showed up uh, a dozen. Ten bandits, two lieutenants. Ten? Yeah. Yeah. They came ready to fuck. And the... So did we, right, ladies? Thugs were led by this mean woman and a slightly less intelligent man who seemed to be below her uh, in that regard. And Svetlana tells you that the woman threatened to cut off Oleg's hands. And for payment for not doing so, that first visit, she took her wedding band, Svetlana's wedding band. Oh, I, I'm going to promise to get that back for her. And then the the next few visits, uh, it was just a few bandits with the dude, not scary lady. Uh, about how much time has passed in game while we're talking with the, the lovely couple? A uh, couple hours, nothing crazy. Still middle of the day, mid afternoon. Happily finished off that bottle of wine. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, it's it's they've kept it coming for you. Beautiful. Yeah, milady. Uh, I promise to you that we'll we'll fetch back your wedding band. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous that these these bands have been taking what they've taken from you. Uh, we'll we'll do everything in our power to make sure that you get back what's yours. She says that would be lovely. Baynard, Baynard, buddy, don't make promises you can't keep. Listen, I that a little bit more. Than listen, I Darkus, we we'll, we can maintain this. Don't worry, we can we can figure Baynard, this out. It's about managing expectations. Just kill my drink. <laughs> now you keep referring to her as the the scary woman no name no no info to go off of no names uh they do not deign us with that information um we know that there are bandits there's very clearly this woman who's in charge and then sort of her left hand man what's he like uh, a bit stupid cruel typical bandit i think we have to name her roxanne because of taylor <laughs> 
Roxanne. Yeah, that's cool. You don't have to cut off my husband's hands. Roxanne. Roxanne. Uh, I wonder if we could try to rig up some sort of pulley system to to close the doors from on top of the palisades. No, just close them with our hands. I think we just push them shut. <laughs> or you just say fuck it and shoot the damn people. We want to close the gates so they can't escape. They're going to be on horses. Personally, I don't want to be down there on, on my feet when they are mounted on horses. So I'd rather be able to close it from the palisades. I mean, I don't have any spears. I have a bow and a club. I'm not getting down there with, with horsemen. That's fair. So, I mean, I got some block and tackle. I got some, some ropes. Do you think we can try to rig something up to close the door automatically behind them? Yeah, you've got some trapping and some stuff going on with these bees. Yeah, what kind of skill do you think that would be? Um, survival, you think there, Connor? Um, I'll give it survival. Um, someone might have trap making or something similar as well. I have, um, well, I have disabled device. Mm, no, no, there's there's a craft as well. Craft. I mean, if we have the rest of the data this week, we'd be able to just take a twenty on the whatever check it is. Yep. So if uh, my survival is plus five. Do you think we'll be able to raise something up, Connor? I think so. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Um, whether it works or not will be a question for later. I mean, we, we're tested out as much as possible. Okay. So, I mean, sure. unless they they fuck up, they fuck it up somehow, like if they cut a rope or something. Okay. Do you want me to give you a roll or are we going to take 20 on this? Like, what do you want? You've got the rest of the day, so you happily take a 20. Okay. So my idea would be that we would bring up some sort of rope that when someone's on the top of the palisade, they'd be able to pull the rope and it, it would close close the doors sure. um, behind them. So yeah, if you guys think that's cool. So do we all want to be on the palisades type of thing or maybe on top of some of the roofs of the buildings? Like, Yeah, I'm thinking uh, the southeast corner will be for me across, like diagonally across from the bar on the side of the gate up in the uh, tower there. So do you want me on the other side of the gate to pull the rope and... So, yeah, we we so me, you know, me and you on either side of the gate, you pull the, like you'll have the crossbow ready to shoot them. I can be on the the top of the shop with my bow. Out of curiosity, why would you use the tops of buildings when you've got these perfectly good walls? I'm just thinking if we need to get down to ground level, having all of us up in the palisades, it's kind of a disadvantage. Well, I need to be relatively close because I don't have the range that you guys have. I'm on the shop, you're in the shop, and so when they start coming out and we need to address them, we can keep their focus forward. How, how far is the shop from the uh, cart? You're probably better off in the stables. The stables. They're right beside this uh, center area. I need like something within like 30 feet. Yeah, no, you'll definitely be within 30 feet. If you're just hiding inside the stables, you're right there. Okay, perfect. We should have Svetlana move the taxes out of the cart and into whatever hiding spot they're going to be. Uh, I don't think you should do that. That's all about tip them off. Yeah, do they put them in, like, sacks or stuff? Can we put rice or something in their place? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's it's a covered cart with bags. Uh, if you want to replace it with their... So, uh, sorry, they put the, the, the taxes or the payment in a, in the cart... And then the bandits jump up with a cart and grab it usually and just leave? Yeah, they load up. They've got extra horses with them. They load them up and take them away. I have a slight question for the group. Connor keeps calling these taxes and not stealings or loot and stuff. Taxes is in quotes. Okay. I was like, are we going to start killing tax collectors in this barely stable Wild West? No, this is wild land. No one has rights to this land. So no one can collect taxes here legally. I believe the kings have right to this land. Well, we but that's the thing. We're setting it up so that our rulers have rights to this land. I like the idea that in this drunken plan, I would start arguing with Kimple about taxation. I'll, I'm going to turn to like Oleg and Oleg, uh, how attached are you to your cart? Would you be upset if it like maybe went up in flame? I would be upset. Yes, this is okay. this is how we transport things for sale outside of shop fair, fair that's fair that's fair yeah okay we, we won't damage the cart <laughs> what if it only looked like it was on fire i do not understand i don't i don't either i wouldn't listen to him he's he's a bit daft i think this elf boy he scares me yeah 
Me, me too, man. Oh, like me and you gotta stick together here. These people here are a bit, uh, bit bonkers. I think ears aren't just pointy; they're keen. He can hear us. Oh boy. Yes. Oh no. I don't know what to do next, guys. I really don't. I think we're overthinking this. Bandits come in, lock them in, carry them on. That's that's the plan, boys. What else? Uh, what else is in the cart? At the moment, nothing. And how many bandits generally jump up to the cart? Is it one, two? Uh, they'd like to load up pretty quickly, so they all sort of load their horses. Not to derail everything, but I have a slight second plan. Mm -hmm. What if we put the dwarf in with the taxes and just let him go scout it out? He's not that tiny. A dwarf weighs two to three hundred pounds. I believe you're smaller than me, and just I, I have to... I have the largest crossbow you can have. I, if I am not ranged, I am pointless. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be on that tower, boys. I, I appreciate the effort. I just like the idea that we're like, stop them from taking the taxes. And we're just like, no, let them kidnap one of us. Well, my question was, if there's somehow I could hide in the cart, and if only one of these bandits is going to jump up into it, he's going to die. Promise. Actually, that might be a good way to make sure that the... Guy with the sword is but, up front. But I am a fragile being. And I do not want to be by myself surrounded by four other bandits. I think the best plan of action is have us pick our way at them a little bit first with our, our long range stuff, like me and uh me and the dwarf. And then once they're they're damaged a little bit, then you can pop out and, and attack somebody. And definitely they'll turn to face us and then you can stab them in the back. That's that's a thing. An attack of yeah. opportunity, if uh, if you will. Yep. I see what you did there. Yeah. So I I think that's probably our best bet. Is that it, it, you wait till, uh, I mean, even if one of them's either really hurt or one of them's even dead before you jump out. Because like I mean, they're gonna probably try to either fire arrows back at us or try to climb the palisades to get to to us. Question to the DM: Is there a spot I could hide, like hide myself underneath the cart? Yeah, it's a full size cart. Like up within it? It's it's just a very basic cart. Imagine a trailer on the back of a van. Like it's not something crazy. No, no like it, overhang or anything. No, if you if you lay yeah, down in the stable. You might yeah, yeah. I mean we can probably like kick up dirt around you and stuff too to try to nah. make it look a little bit darker and stuff. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll stay ground level in the stable with Taylor. Marcus. Oh yeah, I like that. Two and two. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm trashed now, by the way. Like, you're legitimately trashed, or? No, no, in-game. Oh, yeah, you're going to sleep it off. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not drinking too much, because I know we're getting busy tomorrow. Nope, as long as they're pouring it, I'm drinking it. I think they're going to cut you guys off at a bottle each. Four bottles of wine total. <sighs> Fair. This is still business, friends. We deal with more tomorrow. I started drinking Baynards. That's fine. So from the tower, just to pass off... That there is indeed four bandits and not 24 bandits are the scary woman. We'll do uh, bird calls, a tweet for each bandit, and then a crow call for scary looking women. Gotcha. Caw-caw! No, <laughs> the crow call sounds like Roxanne! <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne! Very good. We'll, uh, we'll work on it. So you guys have a plan? Are you happy with it? Uh, I guess so. I I guess when we see them go up to the cart, we're just going to shut the door and go to it. Yep, me and uh, Baynard are going to pull some rope contraction that we're building as we're talking, and that'll slam the door shut, and then we'll start firing, and when everyone's looking at us, you'll stab them in the butts. Question to the party. If you have a third plan, no, you may not. No, no, but that, we're, we're done with planning, but if the scary lady is there, is she target numero uno? Yeah. Or are we taking out the henchman? All right, do we want to try to take any of them alive, or are we just killing these fuckers? Fuck that, kill them. I say we kill the henchmen's, and... We are not leaving the scary lady alive. You don't leave the not boss alive. Leave her alive. This is organic. If we're, we're fighting for our lives, everyone dies. If one guy looks easy to punch, we punch him. Uh, boys, this will just happen. You're, you're cooking this too long. Can I preemptively ready an action for when the door slams, just so everyone's on board? I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I'm playing a bard. So I figure if when the door slams, I can uh, I can start using the bardic song, the in, Inspire Courage. And then that way, if when they come in, they it'll give us all plus one 
uh, moving forward, and it will draw their attention to me and Taylor when they come in and turn around. No, 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 no. I don't want attention on me, bitch. No, we're going to take... We're up in a tower. They're on the ground. We're, we want the attention on us. They'll turn to us towards the door, which will be closed. We'll start shooting, and then when they're looking at us, you're going to stab them in the back and then do what you want. Okay. But we're going to take the initial volley because we're going to be up and high and heavy hitting. For sure. Okay. You guys are going to bed? Yep. Oh, yeah. Got to hang over. Waking up early, though, obviously before sunrise. The team doesn't really have uh, camaraderie set up aside from one night of drinking, but do we want to post up a watch? I'm already passed out in whatever bed I have been provided. (laughs) Okay. Svetlana and Oleg don't believe you need a watch uh, based on the fact that it is a routine sort of thing. They come shortly after sunrise. They leave shortly after that, and that's it. Just before sunrise, I'll head up to the southeast tower, but I won't stay and watch before then. Okay. All right. It's morning. All right. I will uh, situate myself just inside the stable door in a way I believe to be out of sight if I can bury myself in some hay while still keeping uh, sight on the proposed meeting area, I shall do so. I'm going to position myself opposite him. Yeah, still inside, but so we're not blocking each other's line of sight. Okay. I'll keep an eye around, but uh, my focus will be the eastern forest line. Okay. And Baynard? Sorry, what was the question? I was reading a spell. Is there anything you want to do just before we kick things off? No, I don't really have any spells that'll last too long, so I'd rather just cast some stuff when they get... um... I would like my hand crossbow ready. Yeah, how specific do you want me to get? Do you want me to load a shot, or can we presume I I got one chambered? That's assumed. Um, I just mean, like, where are you going to be when they come through the door? Oh, I'm going to be up on the, the palisade getting ready to... I have, like, the rope in my hand. I'm perfect. Like, ready to pull it whenever they walk through. Okay. I don't screw this. When you say the palisade, is that the tower or, like, the walls? The walls. The wall. Yeah, so I'm, like, right next to the gate, basically. You're not visible from outside if you hunker down a little bit? No, I'm trying to crouch down. I'm... All right. Do you need two people to close the door, or can I be in the southwest tower? I think we would have rigged it so one person could close it, so you could be in the tower. I'll be here. Perfect. I'll have my bow next to me as well, and I have my my club on my belt perfect so these tower keeping an eye but crouch down so not to be seen i like it so is anyone gonna percept anything maybe well yeah i assume we're gonna hear horses riding through the fucking front gate i'll probably poke my head out every so often to keep my eyes out for stuff okay um my perception roll i rolled an 18 and then my modifier is plus three so 21 that's pretty good um, you see six horses start to break through the forest. Uh, leading them is a man with a bow on his back. And behind him are three typical bandits, two of them with horses in tow. So four in total? Four in total. Three bandits. I- one seemingly more important bandit. None of them seem female? Nobody looks female. Everybody's pretty muscular and beardy. So I'll give the four, four tweets. Okay. Yeah, so these uh, these four bandits come thundering through the door. Uh, pretty rowdy, pretty cocksure. And Oleg and Svetlana... Well, Svetlana's in the inn. She's not dealing with this. But Oleg's out front waiting for them with his cart full of treasures ready to pay them off. But he's not actually out front, right? Oleg is, yeah. He's in the courtyard. Yeah, they suspect us if he wasn't there, I think. I'm going to slam the, the rope as soon as the last one gets through. Okay, can you roll for me? Do you want any modifiers on this? No, just a straight roll. Seven. Oh. They hear the door slam. Mm-hmm. Roll for initiative. All right. Oh. Roll, Rick, roll, roll. <laughs> 20. I'm just going to assume I'm last unless someone says something under seven. So, they were not anticipating resistance. They are caught off guard free round and you have a free round nice nice so are they all like kind of clumped together yeah they came in they're all just sort of uh hanging out right in front of the gate um right between the gate and the cart uh they're about 25 feet from your hiding place taylor they're about 15 feet from the wall and kimple what uh what tower did you say you were in southeast 
Southeast. So they're about 35 feet from you. Uh, Liam, what's your dexterity modifier? My dexterity modifier is plus two. Okay, mine's also plus two. We should roll off to see who goes first for initiative then between us. We both got 20. Yep. We want to roll a, D20, a D20 or what? D10. D10? Let's do it. Fuck. I got a one. <laughs> I got a five. Okay, Liam, you go first. This is a surprise round, right? So they get you get a standard, you get one standard action in a surprise round. So you could either do a move or a standard. Okay, I guess if if from a hiding spot, would I have to perceive if I saw them turn towards the gate? Um, yeah, they they're a little shocked. Um, a couple of them are looking back over at the gate, uh, but in general, it's just shock at the moment. Okay, this is supposed to be an easy win for them. I think. Yeah. Taylor sees me pull my bow out and without leaving cover, he can see me hike it up and it's got more strings than a bow should. And I drag my hand across some of the strings and start plucking out an uh, inspiring song and get everyone a plus one. Cool. Cool. Plus one to what? To everything. All rolls. Oh. Roll to hit, roll to damage. I'm inspiring courage. As you ironically start singing this song, Oleg books it. It's fair. I like that's that. That's for the plan. So is it is it my turn then? Yep, that's my action. Okay, I'm going to cast Entangle on the whole courtyard. Uh, all of the, the bandits have to pass a DC 14 reflex save. Um, they, if they fail, they're all going to be entangled. Sure. DC 14? Yep. Their horses would have to do it too. Yep. Yikes. All right. Literally everyone falls down. Yeah, so weeds just pop out of the ground and nice. tangle themselves all around ev- all those creatures. So the whole area is considered difficult terrain. They can try to break free from the plants, so that they're they're Crazy. entangled. Okay, so whatever that so. does to their AC, I'm not sure. Yep. Okay, that's my surprise round. That's dope. That is now a ball. You're up. So this one guy that looks a little more important. Does he look like he might know anything, or is he? Just like bigger. Roll me a perception check. Roger. A two. Yeah, he looks like a bandit. Well then. So what I've known before, so we'll go with whatever guy looks the biggest. I'm going to roll to attack. So looks the biggest or looks the most important? Mm. Biggest. He did say biggest. I just want to make sure that's what he meant. Looks like could do the most damage to the guy playing a mean guitar solo. Okay, yeah, that's definitely the guy that looks most important. He's the guy with the bow. Perfect. Oh, yeah, the range guy, for sure. Sorry. Yep. Uh, so are you shooting him? I am. All right. Straight shot. Cool. That's uh, plus one for Liam, right? Yep. yep. Everybody gets a plus one. Yep, on I, I, that's in there. All of it. I have uh, D20 plus four for ranged plus one from you. Perfect. Okay, cool. So sorry, what was that, a seven? Yes. You just miss him. Dicks. Awkward. Awkward indeed. Then I load another shot, swear under my breath, and that is my turn. Uh, you probably won't be able to load another shot just because you only get one ra- one, one action. I have a lot of things. I load another shot. You do not. I do not? You do not. You only get one action. You can either move or take an action. Yeah, but I didn't move, so I... But you took what? your action. Yeah, because it's, pro- it's a surprise. It's a half round. Oh, okay, okay. I, I take back my uh, snippy remark, and I apologize, <laughs> and I will not load a shot. That's okay. Taylor, you're up. I rolled a nine at the closest motherfucker to me. Nine. And so you, you, what are you doing, sorry? Uh, I'm shooting my hand crossbow at the closest person to you me. You also have a crossbow. Okay. A hand crossbow. It's very tiny. All right. Closest one to you. That hits. Roll damage for me. Oh, sorry. I, I missed one thing. Uh, does this apply sneak attack damage? Uh, no. No? No. Even though it's a surprise round. It's a surprise round. And they're flat-footed? Yeah, and you already, like, they've been tangled. They're no longer... You're not sneaking on them anymore. You get sneak attack damage on them. Would you? Yeah. Okay. According yeah. to this, if they do not get their dex bonus, I can get... Oh, yeah, sorry, you're right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, take it. You rolled a one. Yeah, but I have to add, uh... So, ten damage. Yeah, sneak attack is 1d6. You blow this guy's brains out. How much damage did he do? Ten. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. 
Sneak attack, baby. Uh, so his brains splatter across the guy beside him, and his horse whinnies, but he is tangled, so he does not rear. And now... That's fucking terrifying. Can we just all agree how terrifying <laughs> this situation is right now? All these vines just sprout out of nowhere and trap these guys, and the guy just took a crossbow bolt to the face. Yeah, like, right. holy shit. He doesn't have a face anymore. It's gone. <laughs> right through the fucking brain. Fuck. Taylor, I didn't think you could do ranged attacks. Yeah. So whose turn is it now? Uh, now we go to our first round, and we determine that... I went first. You went first, so... Cool. So I'm gonna step out sorry how long does your song last yeah i can i have eight rounds that i can do that for so it starts at eight or you can re-up it every round like does it only last one round it's like i have to spend a round each time i want to do it i I, I don't really understand the question it's not like a hex or anything that lasts for multiple rounds it's you get one no it's now we start that i want to keep it going okay yeah, and just by nature of it being a performance, I can do it while I attack. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's like he's singing while he's doing it. Yeah, I'm going to pull the bowstrings, so on a rest with the harp, essentially, I'm going to shoot an arrow and then keep singing and continue playing after. Now, have you explained that your bow is also your harp? I've seen this. He just mentioned it now. To, like, Yeah. I think everyone's going to see it as I step out and take this shot. Cool. Pylon is going to step out and take a pot shot with that the closest bandit that still has a head. Uh, that will be the bandit covered in blood from the other bandit. Does a six hit? It does not hit. <laughs> All right. So he literally misses a beat, and then keeps playing. That's going to be my turn. I'll knock another arrow, but keep playing. Do you have rapid reload? Uh, no. You don't need it for a bow. For a regular bow? No, you can you can fire a bow as many times as you want, yeah. So we get plus one to our rolls because of uh, the song? Yep. Currently, yes. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my bow as my move action, uh, knock an arrow, and let fly at the, the leader-looking guy. And I'm okay. going to roll a six. Does not hit. Does not hit. No. I feel foolish. He swats the arrow away, yeah. calls you a bitch. I'll show you a bitch is. Uh, next, we have Ball. All right, I'll, sh- I'll shake off that last shot I missed and roll to attack. Again, the same biggest, important, meanest looking guy. Same dude that, uh, oh, this Ooh. is better. That hits. That's a good shot. Yeah. I just like the, the visual of, like, he swats my arrow away, and he's just doing that, his arms raised, and a crossbow just hits him in the side. Oh, oh Jesus. God. <laughs> Fuck. Range, crossbow, D10, plus four, yeah. 14 damage. Wow. Is he so dead? His head also explodes. Uh, yeah. This is just yeah, a, a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bad for the horses we are hosing down with blood. Yeah. Not just bloods. Brains. Just like, just visceral. Just what's in the box level grossness. <laughs> Again, how terrifying is this? Like, you guys miss a couple shots and then blow their goddamn brains out. So uh, I apologize if he had the information we're going to want later on, but uh, that's my turn. Did Oleg run completely away, (laughs) or is he seeing this? No, he went to hide with his wife. He will see the aftermath, I'm sure, when he cleans up his goddamn cart. Wow, okay. Um, Give me a second. I need to readjust. He needs to start buffing some rolls. He needs to start lying a little bit. I haven't, like, rolled at all. You guys have come in here. Your surprise round blew one dude up, missed another shot, blew the next guy up, and now there's two guys left who are tangled to the ground. It's like, Jesus. All right. Who does number two work for? (laughs) We we might want to leave one alive for information. At this point, it seems maybe even two of them. Yeah, when when they're tied down already, this... This feels like punching down. Literally. This is getting a bit dishonorable, boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What were, how do they get out of this, uh, Williams? Uh, good question. They can attempt to break through as a move action, making a strength or escape check. Uh, again, it's 14 for that. Oh, brutal. Okay. 
So they break out. They they get out of this entanglement. Um, so that takes up a move action. For- yes. Um, and they turn towards the door and attempt to start opening it. That's their turn. It is now Marcus's turn. Uh, how far away are they from me now? Um, you're about, what did I say before? 25? 25, you said. Yeah, so you're now about 40 feet away. Okay. Um, does it, sorry, does it cost me an action to reload my hand crossbow? Uh, it depends on the weapon. It should tell you. I think crossbows in this are generally your move action to reload, no? Yeah, move action. Well, that is not ideal. All right, so I will leave the hand crossbow behind. And I will move out my 30 feet of movement Mm -hmm. and draw my two daggers. Okay. And we're back to the top with uh, Pylon. All right. I'm going to square up my shoulders and clear my throat and stop singing and line up a shot with with a little more focus this time. Okay. Same one that's now covered in two splatters of brain? Yeah. So he's facing away from you. Yeah. Do do I have the ability to do sneak attacks in that instance? I Probably don't not. Think so, but you're not a rogue. Okay. Uh, does a thirteen hit? Yep, you hit. Perfect. I uh, I do one damage. So you hit him in, eh, say the calf. Kind of bounces off, bruises him a bit. But my uh, fancy boxing glove arrows. Yeah. Is uh, that my turn then? It is now Baynard's turn, yes. Okay. The one that's uninjured, yes. he has to give me a will save. What am I trying to beat here? Uh, 14 will save. That's not going to be great. He does not pass. Okay, so I stand up and I point down at him and I very commandedly yell, HALT! So uh, on his next turn, he can do nothing. <laughs> he can still defend himself if he's attacked, but like he can't okay. move. He can't do anything. Cool. Yeah. Is that uh, like power word or something? It's the spell command. Yeah. Okay. So he's commanded to halt. All right. Is that it? I think that would be my turn. I don't really want to move. And okay. that's a standard action. So I can't do an attack as well. Don't want to say anything cool. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll yell down and tell them to that they should throw down their arms and surrender. Okay. Throw down your arms and surrender. We will spare your life. It is now Ball's turn. Do they look like they're about to surrender? Uh, you don't know yet. Can't know till their turn. Yeah. They look like they've been yelled at. I rolled 15 for my diplomacy check, by the way. Oh, you're actually trying to... Yeah, like I'm telling them to like, surrender, so I'll, okay. I'll throw out a, okay. a roll for that. So, yeah. I rolled a 17, but my diplomacy is negative two, because nobody likes Baynard. I remember. You've made that clear. Yeah. Paul, you're up. So... Does the diplomacy that change anything? Like, do I see them react or is that they have to wait till their turn? They look very frightened and one of them is not moving at all. One of them is still sort of scrambling for the door. Horses are freaking out the whole time, by the way. Oh, we're not hurting the horses. They're still entangled. (laughs) They have not been doing well. I'm a mean man. Yes. Well, we're not going to hurt the horses. No, we want those horses. Those are our horses. Anyway, so the guy who... Liam tapped on the shoulder, who is scrambling for the exit. I mm-hmm. will do an aim, aim shot for the leg. Okay. So you roll the d20 plus four. So 13. That does hit. Yep. However, I didn't call non-lethal damage, so I'm pre- probably going to fucking vaporize this guy. Stand by. <laughs> White hit his artery. This has gone a lot easier for you guys than it should. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a whoopsie on my bad, boys. So, uh, point of note, Connor, I, I fucked up my damage. Okay, well, how so? Uh, I accidentally added my dex modifier. So I, okay. I should only have done six damage total. As opposed to how many? As opposed to ten. The guy gets okay. blood and we realize he's still alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll bring him back to life in a second. Hang on. We can just say if there's three guys at the gate then, right? Yeah, there's just a third guy now. He's crawling. He's more damaged than the others. Yeah, because you guys literally blew the other guy's face right off. Um, And this guy, too. If you were aiming at his face, he would no longer have a face. So he takes an arrow right to the knee and then wakes up in River Run. 
<laughs> Who are you? Yeah, full fade to black. <laughs> you got us again, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> He's in every medium. They re-release Skyrim in our Dungeons and Dragons game. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! Yeah, I'm glad I got to do that. That was fun. So we now have two undamaged people. Uh, sorry, one half dead dude and one halted dude who's literally just standing there. Um, they have heeded the call to throw down their arms and stop. Hands up and uh, beg for parlay. How close to dead is that one guy? He's about half dead. Like, is he like bleeding out on the ground or? Um, you did a good chunk of damage. He's got an arrow in the shoulder. Like, he's not happy. I am going to use a cantrip. The soon, as soon as they drop their weapons uh, on the ground between them, I am going to cast dark. Yeah, so that they're enveloped in like a little bubble. And I can okay. shout out to them. And don't you move. What's the range on dark? How much does it actually bubble out? Yeah, it, uh, it bubbles out like 20 feet. Jesus. Yeah, bonkers. I, I just I don't want it to get us. I just don't want them to see us in case they uh, slip away. But I have dark vision and so does the dwarf. So we can see yep. them. Does dark vision cover magical darkness, though? I'm going to allow it for now. It's not like it's sort of supernatural, but it's also a very low level spell. I want them to know that we're asking them questions, and I think they'll answer more honestly if they think they're getting out of here. And since they know that we can kill them, uh, I just want them to know that, or I don't want them to see our faces in case they slip away. So, Baynard goes blind. Is he not more than 20 feet up? He's enveloped in darkness. He's 10 feet above them. Oh, okay. Baynard, you cannot see anything. Yeah, I'm kind of pissed off, but that's fine. You can move. <laughs> I'm also enveloped in darkness because I moved up 30 feet. Yeah, yeah. Also not pleased. How dick of a movie would it be if I cast light? <laughs> <laughs> would that be a natural response to a party member casting dark? <laughs> I think I'd probably move back a bit like along the palisade until I got out of the darkness area. Yeah, I, I think that as I do it, I'm going to I'm going to call out to them not to move and tell everyone to uh, to come over to me. Yeah, that's fair. So they could know that, like, I'm the one who did it. I assume they'd be accompanied by a sound of some sort, like a like a dissonant chord or a snap of my fingers. For uh, for show, mostly. Yep, that's reasonable. God damn it, P.O. I can't see a damn thing. Just come to the stables and ugh, just pie is fine. All right, P. I'll be right there. <coughs> oh, he's fucking touched. Just my question, Connor, is this because if... They can't see into it. I was totally going to kill that other guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a sidebar. That is a sidebar. The the dwarf and the elf can see, um, but you don't know that. I don't know that. Oh, shit. You see a big thing of darkness. They have thrown down their weapons. Nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish what I started. I, I don't think I would. Uh, okay. Well, take a roll. Well, you miss. So you stumble into the darkness, and then you stumble out of the darkness, nothing <laughs> having happened. Nice. You swing wildly for no reason. Yeah, so you've got two guys that are shrouded in darkness. Uh, do people with dark vision want to go tie them up? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go do that. So I'll go and tie, start tying one of them up, and I assume the other one is complying? Uh, he's currently halted. He's probably got another minute or so of that where he's just standing stock still. Cool. Take your time. Tie him up, too. Yeah. What do you want to do? Um, I'll probably go gather up the horses, I think. Yeah, you're going to want to calm them down. Yeah. I would go help. Once, uh, once they're all tied up, I'm going to Ask the one closest to me, who's still in the darkness. Now, are we going to have to follow these horses back to your camp, or are you going to tell us where it is? Um, hmm. How do we want to play this? Intimidate? He... Or yeah, it's definitely... New Joe Pesci for bandits. Who's Joe Pesci? <laughs> From... Little Joe can't Get sing. Here, Connor. What? I don't know Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. From Home Alone. You know, he's the, uh... He's the, he's just the criminal from movies. I don't know if I can do that voice. Liam can't do it either, so You can't it's do this voice either? 
I can't do Joe Pesci either. <laughs> Just the criminal voice, you know, from New York. So like, <laughs> like someone's grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was intending to do them all as Lee Mack from British comedy because he does a very he does a very regal British, but it's a little much. And I'm pretty sure he's the bandits in Fable 3 as well. That makes sense. But they're uncredited, so I'm not sure. But every time I hear them yell, I'm like, that's fucking Lee Mack. Fucking twin blade. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Yeah, give me a roll intimidate. Well, that would require me knowing... Mm-hmm. My intimidate off the top of my head. I have to I imagine it's minus two. Uh, realistically, it's you got high charisma, and you're intimidating him. Intimidate, not diplomacy. I I am presenting him with options, and I think I'm doing it with an audible smile. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you. Okay, so it's plus seven if it is that. Jesus. All right, I'm going to split the difference. What's your intimidate? Three. Okay, so I'll give you five. That's a fair amount. That's an 18. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That He's on board with this. Give me a second. I want to know what I'm going to give away right now. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. Yeah. Okay. So um, this bandit, uh, the one that's been damaged and coerced into giving up. Coerced is strong. Convinced. He got shot. And then he was uh, told to throw down his, ar- throw down his arms. And then he wouldn't be harmed, and then some maniac came wielding knives through the darkness. He didn't see that. It was no. dark. I know. <laughs> you don't think you feel those knives flying around? Well, he didn't. That was the uh, that was the problem. That is that is exactly the problem. <laughs> if he'd done his job, it'd be problematic. But um, he he notes. He says, "Please, please don't hurt me. I'm not. I'm not interested in dying today. I can help you." I can tell you who you just killed and why that might be bad for you. Oh, yeah, please. Make him roll intimidate. I feel like you're trying to lean on us a little bit. At least not intimidating. I'm going to tell you who you just killed and why that might be bad for you. Yeah. He's giving me fucking sass is what he's doing. So is everyone paying attention to these guys right now? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm talking to the horses right now. You saw me walk into a cloud of darkness and now you can hear me talking to the dude. Is Oleg out and about yet? No, he's still in his room. He doesn't. He doesn't know the battle's over yet. I would like to sneak over to the cart. <laughs> okay, give me a roll. Roll stealth. Just Taylor, for your reference, we swapped the gold out in the cart with rice. What? Yeah, we what talked about happen? this. We did discuss that. I don't know if that actually happened though. No, it did. It did. You it did. you keep doing your roll. I want to see what happens. Bitch. <laughs> Fucking sneaky as fuck, though. Yep, yep. So that's a good character move. You were too drunk to know we moved the gold. <laughs> <laughs> so Pylon is interrogating this man in a cloud of darkness that you cannot see. You walk away yep. towards the cart with the intent to steal, it seems. Yep. And you flip over the tarp on top. You cut open a bag and rice spills out. Rice. All sorts of rice. I nonchalantly go over and help uh, Baynard gather up the horses. Baynard? Baynard does not notice you cut open this bag of rice. Baynard wouldn't notice his own fucking nose if it wasn't on his face. Fuck you. You guys have a very harsh opinion of Baynard. Everyone should, really. (laughs) No one likes Baynard. This has been made clear. I'm gonna do good, and I'm gonna not remember anyone's name. (laughs) I'm so glad that I like that we've so I've so quickly established his character. Like this is fantastic. You deeply bowed at a peasant woman like a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a pro. Anyways, back to the interrogation. Who do we kill? Let's. Uh... Who are you? <laughs> You've killed Haps Biden, lover oh, no. of Roxanne. Haps. <laughs> Haps. And Roxanne will not be pleased. She won't care a whole lot because she'll kill him herself at some point. But more importantly, we're not coming back with the goods. Where can we find Roxanne? Is she the scary woman? 
Uh, we find her pretty scary, yeah. Uh, she's the only female bandit, if that means anything to you. I feel like you took the question with the wrong wording. Um, I do enjoy j- dangerous women. Yeah, where can we find her, not do you find her scary? <laughs> you asked me if she was the scary woman. I also asked where we can find this scary He woman. He wasn't there for our conversation, Pilo. Jesus, where's your <laughs> camp? Camp is about a day's travel uh, east of here. Eastish, southeast. I hope, or we're fucking working for free. So it's <laughs> it is southeast by the map you guys have down the river a little bit. That's where they're staying at the moment. Uh, it is not our permanent camp. Pylon has located the map. Okay, so I'm looking at it now, and they are a day's hard ride. Okay, uh, I guess I ask I ask him how many of them there are at the camp. A half dozen on any given day. A dozen total, but we're not there all the time, obviously. We're out banditing. Like a dozen more, or like did we just kill, like take out four of their numbers, so there's eight left? Uh, good question. I'm going to say a dozen more. Fuck. Oof. Since you guys fucked these guys up so good, you can handle a few more bandits. Well, we got the jump on these guys. Yeah, just wait till we have to take a hit. <laughs> yeah, you did nothing with getting the jump on them. You blew their brains out on normal combat. <laughs> like, we barely would have needed to block the door with uh, how it played out. Although it is good that you did, because you were able to capture some bandits. Yeah. Um. Okay, I think... So, uh, I have gotten the location, and... Uh, I think Pylon knows the area pretty well, so he wouldn't necessarily need them to mark it on the map. You do not know this area super well. Okay. You are from much further north. Yeah. And this is very specifically the Roughlands. Not really quite a barred area. Fair. All right. I'm, uh... Okay, I'm gonna... The one I wasn't talking to, do I have the means to just knock him out? Do you? Actually, you know what? I'm going to do another cantrip... To get them out of the darkness. You could just dispel your your darkness, I think, can't you? Okay, I'm going to dispel darkness and lead them to the group. Okay, I say we, sh- we should, like, get everything into the, uh... Sorry, we should get everyone into the stables with the horses and everything and start, like, stripping them of all their gear and see what they have. Agreed. So let's tie them up to, like, a, a post. Like, we'll tie them up to a post or something. That, this is, sorry, two of them are alive? Yeah. Yep. You've got okay. Two left. Are they? Are one is one injured, or are they both injured? One is injured. Yeah. One is injured. Okay. He's about. He's not dead, but is he? He's not great. Bloodied? Yeah. Um. I'm gonna turn to him and say, "May the blessing of the dead, uh, of the one dead eye, uh, be upon you." And I'm going to heal him for four damage. Okay. He's fully healed then. Oh, cool. He's very appreciative. I punch him for four damage. <laughs> Uh, no one else was hurt, right? We were all fine. Yeah, everybody's cool. Nothing. They literally showed up, got two of them blown to bits, tried to run away, and are now captures captives. Well done. Cool. Does anybody want to keep these clothes for a disguise? I do not. But I you guys look. Say, the, you guys look the type. You and I cannot disguise ourselves as these bandits very feasibly. Yeah. What kind of loot did we get from them first off? They didn't have a lot on them. Um, okay. They were traveling light in order to take this loot and head back to camp. Any good armor? Any good like weapons? Like, what's that bow like that that guy had? His bow was a composite longbow. Does anyone mind if I take that? I could really use a composite longbow. Go nuts! My bow's uh, specialty. I got a man cannon here, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> My longbow, old longbow, was only one d eight. This one's gonna be one d eight plus three for me. It's gonna fuck people up. Awesome. Okay, so was there, was there any money, any like anything else on them? Nothing worth value. And their armor was pretty shit too. They've shit in it, and it is no longer worth anything. Okay. Uh, let's go talk to Oleg. No, let's bring Oleg here. I feel like it- no, no, we don't want to talk talk about these guys in front of them. We we got some stuff to talk to Oleg about before we deal with these two guys. I will guard them. I'm I'm gonna <laughs> okay. stay with the. Uh, I did the capturing and. I, 
I okay. feel weird leaving it behind. Okay, so I'm going to go up to Oleg. Like, uh, is Ball with me then? Yeah, I'll go with you. Excellent. I have no reason to believe that anything bad will happen to these guys. Oleg there, uh, good friend. Uh, we arrive victorious from the field of battle. Uh, how, how are you and your wife faring? What a wonderful news, comrade. Thank you. Svetlana will be very happy with this. Bad news. We weren't able to find her ring. I think that the, the bandit queen still must possess it. But well, don't worry, I will not rest until, until it's found. These men have wronged you. They've uh, committed crimes against you. What would you have of the two that we captured? Hmm. Let me double check. Uh, well, they've gone off. Have we searched the horses or just the bodies and guys? No one mentioned the horses. Yeah. I said the horses. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't catch that. <laughs> Uh, the horses are pretty spooked. Um, they've got a day's provisions left. You can see that they probably were able to hold a few days worth. Um, nothing of any real note. Again, this was just a collection party. A quick journey. Yeah, short journey. A couple days there, a couple days back at most, if you take a leisurely pace. Uh, yeah, so Oleg... He's not interested in being judge, jury, and executioner. He doesn't want that voodoo on him. Mm -hmm. um, the guards arrive tomorrow. Okay. And he'll let, he'll let the guards address that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Eric, I, I, cause I know it's something your character would care about. We didn't promise them safety, but it, uh, it was something that was kind of implied. But they're still criminals. I mean, if Oleg decided he wanted to hang him up, I would have been fine with that. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that they committed crimes against him, in my opinion. So, like, you were willing to defer to him. Yeah, like in my mind, like, like it's like if someone murdered my kids, I'm going to let that person decide what. Like, sorry. So, if if I caught a criminal in this world and they killed someone's kid, like I would go to them and say, "What do you want? Is done with this guy? Like, it's up to you. Like, it's Fair. they they wronged him. It should be his choice. And if he wants to defer to the guards and defer to like higher law, that's fine with me too. Like, perfect. Okay, yeah. I'll yeah. be glad the king's guard will make the choices. Yeah. Like, that's what we're here to do is bring the king's law, so. Something to add to the things you found? Okay. On the big dude with the bow that got his face blown out. He had a small silver pendant on his neck in the shape of a stag's head. Oh, wow. And total, total you have found 70 gold across all of them. 70 gold for these little scrubs? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Total. Yeah. There's what, four of us? We can split that equally? Yeah, we'll wipe it off and we'll keep it. Is the stag's head pendant magical at all? Can I get a check on that? Arcane check or what? Yeah, knowledge arcane. I can I'm going to cast detect magic. Sure, that works too. Yeah. Is there a magical aura on it? No. Okay. Plain silver. I will try to appraise it. Six for my appraise check. <laughs> It is worth 70,000 gold. It's some sort of unicorn with two horns. <laughs> I'm just going to let you guys know the stag is a sacred animal to Rastil, my god. I would love to have this pendant if you guys are all okay with that. If I'm done, then well, I'll, are we all back together? Yeah, we're all like, I was, I'm was. i assuming we're like, after we talked to like, we... Yeah, I kind of meet in the center. Oh, yeah. well. Sort your shit out. You're uh, you're welcome to keep it. It's uh, the lover of that woman, so she'll she'll probably be upset to see it. Should be gunning for that. I'll wear it proudly and uh, prom and uh, prominently on my over my armor. Then, um, about about her lover though, um, I wonder if Oleg has a bunch of salt. If we should pack his head in salt and. Keep it for when we meet her. Fantasy Christ, man. <laughs> the stag's head should probably be enough. I'm not carrying around a head all the goddamn day. No, no, I uh, I like this new direction for Baynard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, maybe that's, maybe I'm stepping out of my alignment a little bit, but. It's pretty aggressive. I, anything that can give us an edge in, in battle against 12 people, I think. Can we use the head as a weapon? <laughs> no, no, you know what I mean? Like, well. No, we can you can pull it out and show it to only them. Only if like, you use it as a weapon are you allowed to so carry that head. Your informant did note that not everyone is present all the time. 
still like we're gonna have to fight a bunch of guys i I feel like all right you're welcome to do it if you want anything we can do to help us intimidate them i think is is worthwhile i am neutral as it doesn't break a law yeah we we shot him so hard in the face that oh right we did shoot him in the face face, didn't we like do okay. You recognize these dental records. Yeah. Okay. I, I revoke my. <laughs> I revoke my uh, suggestion. Then he had a very distinct way of feeling. <laughs> oh, this is giving me horrible mental images. We are terrible people for what we did to these people. Can we just like talk about how awful we are for for just straight up murdering these guys? Like bandits. Shit, bandits. guys. I don't know, it must have been fucking terrifying to be these people though. Shit. Do we want to talk with these these guys any anymore? I think we have all the info we need from them. We know uh, where they're located. Admittedly, I didn't do a sense motive check, so I I couldn't confirm if he was lying to me about how many people. But you intimidated pretty well. Yeah, I I trust what they said. We can pack up and go when. So uh, Connor, I'm just curious about more about our charter a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. are we supposed to go out and kill? Like the rest of these bandits, are we supposed to go to the, the their place now? You think? Like what? Are you, what are we supposed to do next? That is up to you guys. So your charter is to explore mm-hmm. and find suitable land for settlements. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Through that charter, you are given the rights to eliminate anyone that is in the way of that. Okay. Um. It's not a necessary thing, for sure. Okay. But if you're setting up a town, you probably don't want a bandit camp a day away. Yeah. I'm here to uh, restore order and law, so I would want to go, and I would say to you guys, they are going to be super pissed at us. If we don't take them out, they'll be watching our back. We'll be watching our bags the whole time, and that's how I'm selling it to you guys, that we should go deal with this bandit camp. And for a oh, penny. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm of the same mind on that. Like, <laughs> Never leave an enemy behind you. We slapped them in the face with a huge gauntlet here, and if we don't go after them, like, I don't know. I, my main worry is that we're going to, like, walk into a group of eight of them and we're going to get fucked up. That's my, my biggest worry. We have to go. We'll do a perception check. We'll it's fine. Around. If we have to, we ambush a couple of them every once in a while. You have to sacrifice an elf? You have to sacrifice an elf. <laughs> we can milk a whole session out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Do we want to make that what we do? Wait for the guards to show up because that's tomorrow or a week from now. Is thanks tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm happy to. These guys are pretty tied up. Oleg will leave them alive. I'm happy to jump on the horses and take an easy ride. Take a camp at the edge of the forest and then make it an easy, light days ride to the forest so we can break it into two days. Is my suggestion. But I'm uh, open to the crowd. Did Oleg lie to us about how long the guards were going to take, or was that just your mistake, Connor? I wasn't. It was. A timing mistake. The okay, people okay. that showed up a week ago said that the guards were coming in a week. Oh, okay. So okay. they're here tomorrow. I thought he was like yeah. manipulating us yeah. for a second. Like, that's very <laughs> clever, Oleg. <laughs> well played. I think you guys are thinking too hard. <laughs> guards are coming. They're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what this says about Pylon, but I think he'd rather wait until the guards were there. We can, because it's, it's the early morning, so we can rest for a whole day and, and uh, maybe milk a couple more meals out of Oleg and his wife, but yeah. Honestly, I think we should take the meal to go, man. I, I think strike while the iron's hot. They're not going to expect us. They're going to, so what's going to happen is they're, they're going to expect their friends home like tonight at dinner and they're not going to show up. And then they'll probably like either set out immediately to get here tomorrow morning or they'll spend the night and then set out the next morning. Okay. They could also just send out a couple people. Us? Not instead of like, no, 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 I mean like the the bandits. Yeah, that's you know, so what I mean. I think what we should do is try to get as close to possible as their camp tonight. Um, then rest. I can regain my spells, and then we can uh, try to take out some of them tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, with like, like I, 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 as they're getting ready to like come check on their friends, maybe we can t- attack that party. Or if they they leave people at the camp, maybe we can take out the camp. Like, I think we should use some stealth here and try to get as close to them as possible. I. I, I we need to strike when the iron while well, the iron's hot. Well, we have some surprise left. They don't know who we are yet. Um, I think pulling them into like a trap inside the fort's not only going to work one time. They'll be cautious, looking for their friends from here on out. I think we should split the money with Svetlana and Oleg. 
like give them like 30 coins and we keep 40. Are you taking any of these horses? Yeah, I think we should. I, there's what, six horses? There's six horses. I think we take five horses plus my donkey, leave them two horses. I'm fine with that. Are, are you guys okay with that? Like maybe we give them 15 gold and we keep 45. You each get 15 and I'll keep the pendant. Uh, okay. No, I like that. I, I think that's uh, diplomatic. And if we're all looking at the charters as this is the plan, we should, uh, we probably want some more goodwill here. Yeah, I, I think that they should regain some of what they've lost. I think what you need to do, though, is flip the 15 coins into the big mess and be like, clean this up. <laughs> I'm not a dick, so I'm not yeah, going to do that. A, that's a big dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you're cleaning up, I'm not cleaning up and getting ready to leave, you know what I mean, getting your shit together. Mm-hmm. Uh, an older man walks through the gate. Looks you all over and goes, you boys made quite a mess. And then walks right into Oleg's. <sighs> uh, okay, cool, man. It's not like we're surrounded by bodies right now, but what, whatever. You do you. Thank you all so much for joining us for our first episode of Ear of the Beholder. We're extremely excited to be releasing this after many months of technical issues and life in general getting in the way. We started recording back in September of 2019 and have about 10 sessions prepped for release, so we'll be catching up for a few weeks before we get to parody. Aside from our website, eotbpodcast.com, you can find the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere you want to at this point. You can also follow us on Twitter at eotbpod or email us at eotbpodcast at gmail.com. If you like the show or think you might like it after a few more episodes, please stick around. Share it with your friends or non-friends that might enjoy nerds doing nerd stuff. Remember, adventure is in the ear of the beholder.